So when you look at me, what do you see? <laughs> you see the uniform? The badge? What images does that put in your head? <laughs> you might think of things like a cell door shutting with that pin dropping, locking into place. Or words like prison, incarceration, or confinement. You see, my job has taught me so much, and I am a correctional officer for the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. And the one thing that my job has taught me is that confinement does not have to be confining. You see, I'm actually here today to talk to you about what I had for lunch yesterday. <laughs> I had a salad. It is a simple salad. It is tasty, organic, wholesome. It was locally grown. It's just a simple salad, but it simply shouldn't exist in a prison. Now, the idea of a salad on a prison menu is pretty unique. But, like most ideas, this started with a loss. You see, in Texas, there's a competition called Herbs Behind Bars. In it, prison systems from around the state work with Lee College in development of herb gardens within prison facilities. Now, judging is based on production and presentation. And in November 2016, my lieutenant, Eric White, came back from this competition with a second place win. Now, we have a saying at our unit, if you're not winning, you're losing. And he knew we had to do something different. So he went, like any of us would do, he went to Google. <laughs> he typed in extreme gardening. <laughs> and he came across a video. Now, when he came back to the unit, he was excited. He was pumped. He was totally ready to hit the ground running because he was talking to us about all this weird science stuff. We were growing grow crops, not in the ground, but in water. He was talking about grow tubes. He had watched a hydroponics video on YouTube, and it had completely changed his life. But what do you do when you have 100% drive, 100% determination, and not a solid clue as to how to get started. <laughs> you end up with our first system. <laughs> now it's made from a bathtub, solo cups, and a pool pump. <laughs> you see, the principles of hydroponics is pretty simple. You pump a nutrient solution to the plants. The plants uptake what they need, and the rest falls back to the water reservoir. Now, plants are going to grow bigger and faster because they're not fighting for the nutrients like they do in the soil. Our system did this really well. But keep in mind, we were working within the confines of our budget, and nothing screams government agency quite like our budget. You know, <laughs> zero dollars. <laughs> now, we weren't going to let a lack of funding slow us down by any means. So we quickly realized we needed to learn more. Now, we needed to learn more not only to teach offenders how to build these systems, but we had to teach them how to maintain and operate them as well. So the officers began spending all of their free time, as much time as they could, on studying and researching. And the offenders kind of got on board in a unique way. See, they started problem-solving the system using items that are commonly thrown away. One of the things that we have to deal with is trash, and my department is in charge of the trash. So the offenders were on board, but their mantra quickly became repurpose, recycle, reuse. You see, the worst thing that a correctional officer, the mistake that we can make, is underestimate how ingenious they are when it comes to how they look at things and the ways things don't need to be used. <laughs> now, with this mantra of repurpose, recycle, reuse, we started looking at ways of how that could be included in hydroponics. And we're always looking for ways to save money. And one of the things we started doing was we stumbled on aquaponics. With aquaponics as a type of hydroponics. Essentially, we are substituting the fish, specifically fish waste, for the chemical nutrients. Now, to get this accomplished in a nutshell, the way aquaponics works is we overfeed the fish. 
They secrete ammonia in their liquid waste. Two forms of bacteria take that ammonia and convert it to nitrite and then to nitrate. Now, plants uptake this nitrate, cleaning the water, and the rest returns back to the water tank. It sounds simple. It's just simple ecology. But we needed to figure out a way to do this with no money and no equipment. And that's why I love to mention socks in a penitentiary. You see, my unit houses 3,200 offenders. That's two pairs of socks for every person there, plus extras. Now, I couldn't go out and buy a fancy filter to get this done, but I had a lot of socks lying around. <laughs> so we put a sock on the end of the pipe. Presto changeo instant filter. To get aquaponics to work, we had to separate that liquid waste from the solid waste. Now, we did eventually build out a biological filter to house our bacteria cultures, as well as a solid separator made from a bucket and a five-gallon um, five bucket and a barrel. Now, in building out these systems, that mantra of repurpose recycle came home with us. And we, one of the other things we needed to do was build a sunshade for our system, a fancy sunshade. Now, we couldn't just afford to go out and get one. Again, that whole no money thing keeps popping its head up. <laughs> However, as a dad, I have to move my kids trampoline on a regular basis when I mow. And the main reason is the grass grows underneath it better than the rest of the yard, especially in Texas heat. <laughs> so when a trampoline was thrown away in the trash, we took it back to the unit and installed it. Now we had a free, effective shade for our system. As our systems grow, we realized we were growing as well. You see, officers and offenders have plenty of reasons not to trust each other, let alone work together as a team. <laughs> but thanks to a collection of pipe, seeds, and water, we found we weren't working against each other. We were working with each other, and we were working towards a common goal. Now, our system started growing, and it started looking more like a commercial system. We didn't have cash, but we had some skills. <laughs> And in May of 2018, we seemed to have had all the kinks worked out, and we had our first big harvest. Now, it wasn't about the lettuce, the tomato, the celery, or the cucumbers. We had ingredients, not just for a meal, but for a life-changing experience for our offenders. Now, why would this be a life-changing experience for our offenders? Well, in getting to know these offenders, some of these offenders haven't had a salad in 10, 20, 30 years. Some of these guys have been locked up since they were 20. They've eaten fast food their whole lives. What's better is they were able to actually taste the success of this system. Now, our success didn't stop with lettuce. We're growing herbs, too. I hate a dry salad. And if I'm doing something about salad, we need to do something about dressing. <laughs> our first year, we harvested 700 pounds of herbs. Three years later, we now do 21 types of basil, 10 other varieties of herbs and vegetables, in addition to 15 varieties of lettuce. And we ended up with a lot. From growth from our hydroponic, aquaponic systems, as well as our herb garden, within the walls of the Mark W. Michael unit, we harvested 14,000 pounds of raw herbs. <laughs> Now let's put this in perspective, 14,000 pounds of raw herbs. When I go to the supermarket and I buy that little container of basil, you know the one you put up in your kitchen and never use? That's two ounces. 14,000 pounds of herbs would be the equivalent of 1, 112,000 of those containers. That's a lot. First thing we did is we gave it to the kitchen. We completely overloaded their stockpile. They didn't want any more. So what you going to do? Now, I wasn't about to compost or throw this stuff away. Frankly, it was just way too hard to grow. So we started to make donations. We donated to homeless shelters, orphanages, charities. What do you do when your kid walks up to you and says, Hey, Daddy, there's a food drive in class. You do the same thing all of us do. You open up the door, grab a couple of cans of beans, and right there in the corner, that one can of something that has two years of dust on it. Pitch that in. They're hungry. They'll eat it. <laughs> we all do that. What we learned is these places rarely get anything that actually flavor the food. We had the honor of giving the gift of taste to these organizations from a place that would least expect it from. I remember that one of the 
worker started to tear up because it was the first time in years she was able to flavor the food. One of the pillars of the mission statement of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice is to promote a positive change in offender behavior. You see, I can hold them for as long as the state tells us to, but if we're not showing them how to do better, they just become regular customers. From my first days at the training academy, I've been hearing these words, but lately I've been able to see the change in their lives. You see, we were working together to build a system, but now they have a purpose. And with that purpose, a new sense of pride shines in their work. And sometimes I'm able to learn just a little bit on the side. I want to leave you today with something an offender told me. He walked up to me in the garden and said, I am that basil plant. I was like, you got to walk me through this one. <laughs> he said, when we leave that plant alone, the weeds grow up, the bad things. It chokes it out. It keeps it from producing. But when we remove the weeds and the bad things from its life, it can grow and it can produce. My parents were trying to remove the bad things from my life so I could grow and I can produce. So what do you see when you look at me? You still see the uniform, the cowboy hat, the mustache? <laughs> or now you might smell the hint of basil in the air. <laughs> see, we all have confinements in our life. Things like red tape, budget, money. These things can define us as a limitation, or it can... We can choose for it to be an opportunity because confinement does not have to be confining. It can lead to beautiful things like innovation, a sense of purpose, and the gift of taste. Thank you.